Hi everyone, it's me Amari Jazz. Welcome back to my YouTube uh, channel slash live video. Basically, I'm going to be talking about what <clears throat> it's like running a fashion-based YouTube channel and Patreon. So yeah, stick around for more. I got a new video coming out next week called The Pageant Industry and I'm going to play a little trailer of that. Minimize myself. Just go to videos. I don't know why it makes it so difficult. There we go. So basically, um, it is right here. I like this. Anyways, okay, yeah, so basically, that's the video that's going to be coming out next. Um, so let's just get into the questions. I have about six questions that I'm going to answer, basically just giving a more of a deep dive. And yeah, let's see here. So, all right, I'm going to get back to this question because, yeah. I wish it was in order. I wish it was in order. Okay. What is your content creation process like? <laughs> From idea to filming and editing. So, that's a good question. For me, because of the type of videos that I make, um, I feel like the editing process is a lot more heinous. It takes a lot more time. It takes a lot more effort basically to get it all the way down to the production process, which is why sometimes I procrastinate. But for me, get this crap out of the way. For me, um I already have a lot of videos prepared. So coming up with the idea of a video is not really the issue. Um what I do is make thumbnail first. Make the good little thumbnail and after I make the thumbnail, I post it on my Instagram story just to give a little sneak peek about what's to come. And then after I do that, I go and I get the script. Sorry, I wanted to real life. I'm running a fashion business. Okay, anyways. So after I make the script, I print the script out. I should have shut out the whole thing, but I don't. I hate getting up, moving, getting up. I hate that. So after I make the thumbnail, I go and I get the script. Once I get the script written, um, I print out the script, and then I go in with a highlighter, <laughs> and I highlight every single key element so if i'm talking to well, let's use the paris hilton anytime i say paris hilton or any noun or object uh, um adjective word i highlight it because those are things that i want to find pictures of those are things i want to find videos of so after i highlight all those things then it's time to go search so if i said paris hilton 2005 dress if i highlighted that that means i gotta go find that paris hilton 2005 dress so i can include that in the video so that's what it is i think i kind of do want to show y'all i'll be right back so <clears throat> Okay, so basically, make sure you're still charging. Okay, so this is an example of an old video that's already posted, so it doesn't really matter. This is my uh, YouTube binder, not YouTube binder, but my YouTube folder is where I keep everything regarding my YouTube channel in. Um, but yeah, so basically, this was the script for The Rise and Fall of American Apparel. 
right? This is a script. And in there I have American Apparel highlighted, Dove Choney, Motel Montreal, Canada. So all of these are basically things that I find, you know. And then once I find all of those things, that's when I group it into a nice album. I put all of it into an album, and then once I get all of those together, then I need to find my background images to play in the background for the video. And then usually, I go ahead and start also finding my background music, so that's when I go on YouTube and I start listening to different beats, listening to different music that I feel like relates to um, the video that I'm making. After that, I lock in. I only thing that I use really for editing is InShot. I don't use iMovie. I don't want to. I I had the final what is it the Final Cut Studio Pro subscription, but it just was. I know it's amazing, but I just was so familiar with InShot, and I'm still learning InShot. And I feel like once I didn't master InShot, once I didn't already like outgrew it then I probably would progress to Final Cut Pro. But right now, it's hard when you're trying to learn how to edit something while editing on there, posting, just like a learning curve that I don't really want to go through right now. So, yeah. I lock in on InShot. I start editing the videos, putting, playing everything exactly where I say it, place it there, adding little cute gifs, little cute pictures, little cute words. And then when I'm finished, I listen to it one more time, add the music over it, listen to it another one more time. And in that first 10 second clip before my intro, once I post the video, I go ahead and post it on my Instagram story, let everybody know, hey, da 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 da, this is what's coming out soon. They're not coming out soon, this is what's coming out now. Go check it out. And that's usually how my process works for my YouTube channel. Or sometimes I get in moves where I just mass produce it, like just do a whole bunch of thumbnails and let everybody know what's coming up next or it just sometimes it just jumps when you're a one woman shop like doing all of this it just jumps around and then with my patreon since my patreon has subscriptions it's a lot more that i have to do like coming up with the wallpapers that i want to release for the next month coming up with the emojis and the gifs and then come up with exclusive video, not coming, I don't have to come up with making sure I produce those exclusive videos. And then also making sure I release the videos that are on my YouTube channel early. So those, that's a little bit tricky, but. Okay, oh, I got to put it really down. Okay, all right, bye-bye. <laughs> okay, but yeah, so that's basically how the process works on my YouTube channel and making those type of videos. That's how my process goes. That was a good thorough answer. <laughs> okay, so how do you plan your content for YouTube versus Patreon? What are the differences and approach? This is another really great question. So basically, like I said, my YouTube channel videos, I have videos that like are six, probably like four or five years in advance from now. Even if I was to release 30 videos in one month, I have so many ideas, you know, that I've already planned, that I've already written out. And a, how I got a lot of my video ideas is really from Pinterest. It's from Pinterest. It's from my own knowledge of influential people, influential movies, my favorite things. And a lot of the videos are topics that I want to see on YouTube that I don't see. Like I have another video that's coming out. Who is Mira Perlay? I love Mira Perlay. I want to know about her. I want to learn more about, you know, that brand, everything that has to do with it. But it's not really a lot of avenues I can go. Vogue, you know, I love a good Vogue, you know, video, but I feel like Vogue doesn't really Tell, talk about people unless they're like at the highest of the highest status. If you're not at the highest of the highest status, you're probably not going to be featured in Vogue. But that's why I love my channel because it's like it's meant for people who love fashion, who want to discover new things, who want to learn new things, and who also want to see brands that they already know, brands that they already love, talked about, expressed, exposed. Like my channel is really about educating and educating people about the fashion industry from talking about, even though Moa, Moa Lola is probably a little bit more famous than when she was originally, but talking about brands like her and then talking about the Corpse Bride costume analysis, like I wanted to just be a space where you can learn so much and then you can still be entertained in the process. So yeah, 
I get my videos just from knowledge, just from scouring on Pinterest, just from like seeing something. Like I remember when um I want to use her as an example, but it's just a lot of things. I just it comes. I think when you're like in a space for a long period of time, I feel like ideas naturally start to come to you. Like after a while, like I feel like when you first create your youtube channel it's like okay what i want to make a video about what i want to make a video about but once you get past that first little huddle of what i want to make a video about making videos in that topic in that arena comes easier and i also feel like when you are limiting yourself and i hate to say limit yourself but when you are making like content that's really hard to like do a lot in it's going to be hard to come up with a youtube channel like youtube uh, more videos like if you're no shade i know i keep talking about the vloggers i don't have issues with vloggers at all but when you're basing your youtube channel on yourself on your own brand on your own personnel it's hard to kind of like branch that out other than yourself but if my umbrella is fashion and not fashion vlogs or fashion hauls actual fashion then i have a multitude of videos i can talk about anything and go deeper in that talk about this and go deeper in that it's like there is no limit basically on the content that i can make basically so making ideas and videos is kind of easy especially when you're like actually inspired by it and you're actually passionate about it um what a question and patreon my only issue with patreon is just kind of trying to understand how i can make my videos worth paying for worth paying for worth having people leave youtube to see it that's the thing that's the kicker and then because my channel is still kind of small right now it's hard to try to figure out okay how can i get my little little bit of audience to leave youtube to go on patreon so yeah that's my only difference but there really is no difference uh on my content with patreon than YouTube. It's just the same. I know some people think that maybe it should be deeper, more exclusive or whatever, but it really is no different. It's just more in depth, I guess, but it's the same fashion based fashion concept. It's just people who want some more exclusive videos or that type of thing. Okay. So that's that. Next question. When I was three. Okay. What are some challenges you face while balancing creativity and monetization? So little girl has not got that monetization authorization yet i'm still striving for that that is like my goal for the end of this year right now i'm at 672 subscribers um and my goal and, you, and i know most people know like to be monetized on youtube you obviously have to have a thousand subscribers so i have not reached that yet um i feel like in the beginning it was hard for me to balance creativity and monetization but i feel like now i really am starting to build an authentic audience that really loves what i talk about and cares about what i'm talking about so obviously i have goals in mind to reach monetization and work towards that so i can do so much more that i have in store but i'm not going to okay let's do trendy topics let's talk about this specific person because they're trendy let's talk about this specific movie or this specific show because it's a trendy thing wow that may be true some things that are trendy and current i may just want to talk about because i want to talk about it but i don't like to do stuff based off the next trend based off the next thing because i feel like when you do that you start to lose your authenticity you start to lose what people came for you for you know they came to you because they wanted to you they wanted to hear you talk about the niche topics the niche subjects but if you start running after any cash grab any main topic you know difference you know than any other youtuber out there so yeah me i just try to remain myself i try to create the videos i want to make i try not to let friends or youtube comments or youtube gurus influence the content that i make for more money or for whatever because money is going to come once you build your authentic audience and i truly build you know believe that and then when you make those videos to try to get a whole bunch of people to watch you those people don't stick around they come for that little the little latest gossip and then they leave so that's why i don't try i try not to make videos for people like that to be honest next question all right how do you stay consistent with uploads and maintain engagement on both platforms now that is very tricky staying consistent with you on youtube is hard for me only because i work and only because i'm a full-time student so i'm full-time student and part-time working and it's like the time that i have is scarce to really sit down and do all those steps that i previously said and 
find all the pictures, get the script written, highlight the script, sit down, edit a full video. That's a full project. You know, and sometimes it lasts over a duration of days where if I didn't have, you know, all these other responsibilities, I could just knock that out. To be honest, like I timed myself today. It only took me like an hour and 20 minutes to edit a video. Imagine how many videos I could produce if I was doing it full time. But it's just hard to stay um, consistent the way I want to stay consistent with uploads and engagement when I have other responsibilities. So that's something I'm still trying to figure out and yeah and on both platforms i think with patreon i feel like once i really can keep the ball consistently rolling with my youtube channel i feel like the patreon will follow as well so i'm not really as worried about there and plus all those perks all those benefits that i'm offering are going to be worthwhile for people to uh, be interested in it number six how do you handle negative feedback or creative blocks so on my channel i don't really get negative feedback really to be honest Maybe because I don't ask, like, I feel like back in the day I used to ask, like, so what do you think about my channel? What do you think about this? What do you think about this? Now, I feel like maybe this is probably arrogant to say. It's probably extremely arrogant to say, but I know what I'm doing. You know, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm making. And sometimes it also makes it difficult for me to, like, ask sometimes people, like, what do you think about this? What do you think about this video or this topic or this thing when they're not in that? arena it's like somebody who had a football channel and they trying to ask me do i think this video topic is good for their football channel i don't watch football i don't know anything about football so i can't give you an honest opinion i'm only gonna give you my limited knowledge but if i was a football enthusiast if i was somebody who really care you know big fan watch other videos go to the game my opinion would be more valuable and valid you know but now i feel like my youtube channel and my stuff i just try to keep it really me you know really me i know what i'm doing if it doesn't work i'll tweak it and i'll tweak it but like my youtube and everything that i do on this on all of these platforms is really an expression of art it is whether you like it or not it's expression of art it's my story and i feel like there is no real way to critique someone's art critique someone's story if there hasn't been nobody else doing it prior you know, so what are you going to base it off of if they're successful or not, if they have a lot of views or not, really. So the I feel like if I was to ask them their opinion, it would only be, I feel like you should do this so you can make more money, so you can get more views. And in my ideas, that's not what's, that's not what I'm trying to do on my YouTube channel. When I ask for opinion, I'm asking your opinion. Do you think I'm articulating this well? Do you think that I'm representing this video topic well? Do you think this video actually matches the aesthetic of that's why I'm asking. And a lot of people, you know, sometimes not able to answer it. And in regards to negative feedback, I mean, sometimes people try to correct the things that I say in the comments. But I really don't care about that. Honestly, as long as I'm generating a fashion conversation in my comments, I'm doing my job. So I don't really have that. And then creative blocks. That's why sometimes I don't like to do too many thumbnails. I don't like to do too many videos back to back to back because I feel like your brain could be like overload with stuff and you and it may not be a fresh perspective or fresh energy or you may not have a, a mental capacity to add this picture and add this overlay and do all that extra stuff because your brain is exhausted so that's why I try not to just do so many um videos back to back to let my mind rest come back fresh go do other stuff take a shower talk on the phone eat some food go to the store relax chill and then get back to editing that's how i like to do it to give myself time away so when i come back i have something like new to think about new to add but yeah that's my last question um that was fun i love these live videos and i can't wait to give you guys more i'll be live again on tuesday of next week so i can't wait to see you guys i really am going to try to figure out a way i can start doing this live and streaming it but i don't know how but when i do get it it's gonna be fantastic and i hope you guys like the little cute backdrops that i'll be having and yeah stay tuned for my next video it's definitely probably going to be uploaded tomorrow friday and i'll see you then bye